Hello everyone and welcome to another game from the 2018 European Team Cup. Uh, it's a game between uh, uh, Polish number one Grandmaster Radoslav Wojtaszek and uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, who's playing board one uh, for his uh, Valeranga chess club from Oslo. Uh, now, um, it's very interesting, I don't know if you remember when we were covering uh, Tal's uh, climb to the Chess Olympus and uh, his preparations for his big match against Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, it was very odd that uh, Tal, for his preparation, decided to play uh, an open tournament in Riga. Uh, usually, you know, the practice was if you're uh, about to challenge the World Chess Champion, you know, you should... Uh, go to your uh, training camp and uh, there, you know, just prepare uh, up until the match starts, you know, don't show anything you've prepared and don't play any games. Uh, and that was very, very odd that Tal decided to do that, uh, which uh, uh, other other challengers before him did not. Uh, but now you have Fabiano Corwana before the World Chess Championship match, he's playing the Olympiad and here Carlsen uh, is playing uh, the European Team Cup. So uh, the times have definitely changed. Uh, now... Uh, I wanted to show you something. Uh, these are uh, their, uh, these are the standings of their uh, previous encounters. So, as you can see, uh, regarding classical games, Magnus Carlsen beat Radoslav Wojtaszek four to one uh, with uh, zero draws. So very interesting. And okay, including rapid exhibition games, he beat him uh, five to one. So they played one rapid uh, slash exhibition game. Uh, so very interesting. Uh, all of the games uh, they played were uh, decisive and. Uh, it seems that now uh, Wojtaszek uh, has a chance with the white pieces to perhaps, uh, you know, lower uh, Carlsen's lead. And also we have a nice photo challenge. It's also a joke. Uh, here uh, is the playing hall of the 2018 European Team Cup. So uh, try to locate uh, both Carlsen and Wojtaszek in this photo. Uh, there you have it. Uh, I uh, Best of luck to everyone. And we also have uh, some nice uh, footage by Nicky Riga. So uh, I hope you enjoy this as well before we check out the game. So uh, let's check it out. Here we have uh, a nice uh, a nice close-up of Wojtaszek. So let's, uh, let's just check it out for the moment. It, this is raw footage, so, uh, you know, the, the best kind of footage. And uh, there we have it, Carlsen is not at the board, so that's the board. Okay, Carlsen comes back at the board. And uh, also, uh, here we have uh, a nice uh, a nice close for Carlsen, you know, considering what to do. Uh, just, you know, to get you in the mood for this game. And also to see uh, how, how the World Champion is uh, enjoying his time before the World Chess Championship match. So there we have it, now let's check out this game. Wojtaszek has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, knight to f6 by Carlsen, c4, g6, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so the king's Indian defense is on the board, and now knight to f3. Uh, bishop to g7 and g3. Mostly nowadays uh, everyone plays g3 against the king's Indian defense. Uh, we have castles, bishop to g2, and c6 now. And okay, knight to c3, we have d5, uh, expanding the pawn all the way to the center c captures uh, c captures and now knight to e5 a very nice move uh, centralizing this knight uh, this pawn has already been pushed to d5 so there's no way to kick it away from there uh, and moving this knight and trying to kick it away with f6 would uh, worsen your position and uh, you would waste too much time so an excellent move uh, and here black can definitely develop this bishop we have bishop to f5 uh, ma many games were played this way, but here Carlsen decides the uh, Fianchetto, the light square bishop, as well as the dark square bishop. Uh, we have castles, bishop to b7, and now bishop to f4. Uh, now Carlsen can develop the knight to c6. Uh, we have uh, rook to c1, uh, developing the rook and placing it uh, on the only open file on the board. Rook to c8, Carlsen does the same. Uh, and now queen to d2, a very nice move uh, that connects rooks, develops the queen, and also creates this battery that perhaps bishop to h6 will be an idea in the future. Uh, we have e6 by Carlsen, and now comes rook to c2. This rook to c2, uh, already on move 13, we have a position that was never before seen on the board. Uh, Wojtaszek here is preparing to double up rooks on the c-file, and now Carlsen has to decide what to do here. Uh, first, he trades off uh, a pair of knights. Knight captures on e5, and now bishop captures on e5. Capturing with the pawn isn't all that impressive. You, Your dark square bishop simply becomes a pawn, and there's really not, nothing to gain from this pawn being on e5. After knight to g4, uh, black is already threatening to recapture it, and there's really no good way to prevent this. Uh, so after knight captures on e5, bishop captures on e5, and now comes knight to e8. Uh, we have bishop captures on g7, king captures on g7, and now rook f to c1. 
uh, knight to d6 by Carlsen. Uh, here, capturing with the king seems to be the way to go, as if you capture with the knight, uh, the knight has uh, better squares from e8 uh, to enter the game. For, for example, knight d6 to c4 or e4, and from g7 it wouldn't be uh, all that great. Uh, rook f to c1, Wojtaszek finally doubles rooks on the c file, and now knight to d6. Carlsen brings the, uh, uh, the knight into the game. Uh, b3. Uh, taking away the c4 square from the knight, and now comes queen to f6. Uh, pressuring the d4 pawn, and since uh, all of Wojtaszek's pieces are pretty much ideally placed, now he simply plays a e3 uh, and forces the pawn in the center, and also now uh, all of his pawns are on dark, dark squares, he has a light square bishop, so all is well for, for white here. Uh, bishop to a6. Now, uh, Carlsen's bishop wasn't doing all that much here, so now he uh, moves it to uh, a, a much better diagonal. Uh, we have a4, and grabbing more space on the queen side, and also perhaps taking away the b5 square from the knight. Uh, queen to e7, now Carlsen wants to uh, exchange uh, all of the rooks uh, along the c-file, and then bring his queen uh, into the game also via the c-file. Uh, knight to a2, Wojtaszek offers a trade of rooks, and Carlsen accepts. Rook captures, rook captures, and rook to c8, Carlsen wants to trade off uh, other pair of rooks as well. Uh, rook captures on c8, and now bishop captures on c8. It seems like uh, an odd decision to capture with the bishop, uh, since the bishop is already placed on a, such a nice diagonal, so perhaps knight captures on c8 would have been better, uh, but it seems not, because now uh, Wojtaszek could uh, bring this knight back into the game with tempo, for example, knight here, attacks the bishop on a6. And after bishop here, now comes queen to c3, uh, controlling the c-file, uh, also knight to c6 uh, would be coming, so after something like queen d7, knight to d3 now, and now uh, the knight has a lot of a lot of other useful squares here, perhaps the black would have to weaken his position with f6. Uh, so Carlsen's idea definitely uh, is the way to go, bishop captures on c8, uh, and now a5, Wojtaszek wants to create weaknesses on the queen side. Uh, queen to c7, a captures on b6, queen captures on b6, and now queen to b4, offering a queen trade. Uh, bishop to a6, Carlsen doesn't mind, he simply improves the position of his bishop, and now queen captures on b6. A captures on b6, and now comes knight to c3. So, uh, pretty much in, uh, a dead equal position, the material on the board completely even, uh, both players uh, with a light square bishop. Uh, only if you, well, if you really study it, uh, it seems that uh, Wojtaszek here has all of his pawns on dark squares, and uh, he has a light square bishop, and Carlsen has all of his pawns on light squares, uh, and also uh, has a light square bishop. So it seems Carlsen has a bad bishop, whereas Wojtaszek has a good bishop. Uh, but uh, uh, the position is not static. Uh, all of the pawns can still be moved, so this is, isn't such uh, huge of an advantage. And there are still knights on the board. Uh, so bishop to d3 by Carlsen. Uh, we have bishop to f1, offering a trade of bishops. Uh, and for now Carlsen declines it, attacks the b3 pawn, and now b4. Uh, we have knight to e4, offering a trade of knights now, and now knight to b5. Wojtaszek is the one who uh, decides to uh, not to trade knights. Seems like a, could be a dangerous idea, as the b4 pawn is now uh, unguarded, and also it's on a dark square, so perhaps Carlsen could uh, maneuver his knight uh, in such a way to perhaps be able to capture it, but uh, there's really no good way to do it. Uh, knight d2 is simply too far away from the pawn, uh, knight here is impossible as the knight is covering this square, so it uh, seems there's no way to take advantage of this. Uh, bishop to d1 by Carlsen, we have bishop to d3, and now uh, again declining the thread, uh, knight to d2. A knight back to c3, attacking Carlsen's bishop, bishop to b3, uh, and king to g2 now. Uh, bishop to c4, and now bishop to c2, Wojtaszek uh, declines the trade, but uh, even if you trade bishops here, bishop captures, knight captures, and there's still nothing to do here by either player. So after bishop c4, bishop to c2 was played, uh, we have bishop to f1 check, king to g1, and bishop back to c4. King g2, and now Carlsen doesn't repeat bishop to f1 check, rather g5 is played. Uh, we have g4 by Wojtaszek, bishop to f1 check, king g3, and now knight to c4. Uh, we have h4, uh, h6 by Carlsen, captures, captures, and bishop to a4 now. Uh, knight to b2, attacking the bishop, bishop back to c2, and now comes king to f6. Carlsen brings his king into the game. Uh, f4, 
I will have bishop to d3 and now uh, bishop uh, to b3. Bishop to c4, we have bishop to c2, bishop to d3, bishop to b3, bishop to c4, and bishop to c2. Uh, here the players agree to a draw as there really is nothing more to do here. You can simply uh, trade off uh, <laughs> a pair of pawns, uh, but after that there's really nothing to do. Material on the board is completely equal and uh, the, the position is completely equal. So yeah, after bishop to c2, uh, a draw was agreed upon, and uh, Carlsen still uh, still keeps uh, his uh, uh, number one spot in the world chess rating list. Uh, but uh, if he if he perhaps loses his today's game, if he will be playing his, uh, today's game, uh, then uh, Fabiano Caruana will be the new number one rated player in the world. So it's really. Uh, Really an odd decision that you would uh, decide to do this. Perhaps he really doesn't care about rating, but he himself said uh, in an interview not so long ago that it would uh, he really wouldn't like it if he, uh, Caruana uh, became the new number one rated player in the world or, or Mamed Yarov uh, during the Olympiad as uh, he's been uh, uh, number one rated player uh, even before he became world champion. So it... Uh, he really wouldn't enjoy it. So it seems uh, very odd that he would uh, play this uh, European team uh, team cup before facing Caruana in the World Chess Championship final uh, in the World Chess Championship match. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, what do you think? Uh, is it uh, what's the correct approach? Uh, playing a tournament before uh, facing uh, the world champion, or you know, uh, d depends from whose pers perspective you're uh, considering. Uh, is it good for Caruana to play a tournament before facing Carlson, and is it good for Carlson to be playing a tournament before facing Caruana? So uh, there you have it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Michael Jovino, uh, Michael McMahon, uh, Dame Pletvarec, Tom Eric Gerritsen, and uh, Revis James for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon, uh, hopefully, with some more interesting content. I'm definitely going to publish uh, Game 14 of the Sp uh, Fisher Spassky World Chess Championship match. Uh, and as usual, uh, thanks to Nikki Riga for all the nice photos and videos. Uh, feel free to follow Nikki. The links to all of her social media pages will be in the description below. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.